Hello, my name is Darren Thomas, and I am the director of EducationalResearchTechniques.com. In this video, we're going to learn about some ways you can manipulate and interact with your data using Plotly in R, a data visualization tool. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn here. So we're going to focus on how to make, for example, drop down boxes, check boxes, these things that will that will allow the end user to manipulate the data in different ways. So first we gotta figure out what libraries or packages we're gonna use. We're gonna have these shown in a second. We're gonna have four of them. Actually, we probably only need three of these, but we're gonna put all four. So we got EGDAT, that's where our data comes from. We're gonna be using the PSID data set. Plotly, which is our star, dplyr, which is for data manipulation in Crosstalk, I don't think we need that for this video, but we're gonna leave it there. So we're gonna go ahead and run these. And so the first one we're gonna learn is how to make a drop down box. Now, first I'm going to make my data, set up my data set. And so you can see right here, what I'm doing here is I'm using the shared, the shared data. This is going to help me to uh, create a specific type of data object that is going to allow me to do some linking. So yes, I, I do need a crosstalk uh, package for this. And so the data set is PSID, the key is married, and the group, this is creating the actual dropdown box, is gonna be called marital status. That's what we're gonna call it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually make our plot here. So I'm gonna use this new object that we just created called Mary underscore data that contains my data in a way that's manipulated so that, so that it is appropriate for the actual dropdown box that we're making right here starting in line nine and ending in line 14. So we're taking our object Mary data and we're piping plotly into it. We're making a scatter plot right here and the hover text, which we really don't need that, but it's gonna tell us the marital status of them. And then we're gonna have the select tie highlight uh, option on it available as well, which again, we probably don't need that in particular, but just watch what happens here when we set this up. So I highlight the code, press control enter. It thinks for a second. Now what's new here, and this is where you have to pay attention, is this drop down box at the top. This is new. If you've seen prior videos, this was not available. As I highlight or pick different things from the dropdown box, if you look down at the bottom where the dots are at on the scatter plot, you can see they change. So when I click again, all these dots are for the people who are divorced. When I click again, all these dots are for people who are married. And let's say I have a really, really long dropdown screen and I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for. I can just start typing in as well. So you see when I start typing in separated, it highlights the separated box. So this allows the user to search for terms they might want if it's like a really, if you have a lot of groups, or you can just click on the options that are uh, available visually that you can see. So this is another way for us to experiment with our data. And so this is called marital status because that's the name we gave to the group in line number eight of our code right here. And the key is based on Mary's on, on the, you know, Mary, that's the name of the variable from the PSID data set, which is right here in line six. So that's how this particular uh, piece of um, code works and how it cooperates within Plotly. So let's go ahead now and we're going to learn how to make checkboxes. So the process is similar. So we're going to start by setting up our code here. So we're gonna make a scatter plot. Let me move this over for you a little bit. So we're gonna make a scatter plot. Uh, nothing really new here. We're using the shared US um, command first, and then we're gonna plot or make our scatter plot by hours and earnings. They're gonna be colored by married. The height and the, the, and the width is gonna be these values right here. I'm manipulating this on purpose and you'll see why. And then we're gonna, of course, add our markers at the bottom. So I'm playing with the height and the width because I wanna make sure everything fits on the screen. So first, we're gonna just go ahead and make our scatter plot as is. 
and I'll just show it to you. And you can see that's what it looks like right there. And so notice how, again, I manipulated the size. It's not filling up the whole screen. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use a new function that we haven't seen before called BS Coles. And this allows us to set up the columns that we want in our visual. Again, you can, you can manipulate this other ways uh, when you make grids or something inside uh, R if you wanted to for other purposes for displaying multiple scatter plots or whatever. But we're going to use BS Coles here. That's our star of this particular example. And so starting in line 22, I'm making three columns here. That's what this BS Coles does. It makes columns. And uh, the widths are going to, you know, widths, how many? Three. And we're going to filter underscore checkbox. That's going to make our actual checkbox. The ID is going to be married. The label is going to be married. The data is uh, from share underscore US. That's what we have right here. That's the name of our data set. Right here. And then we're going to go ahead and put in our group here, married. And then we're going to have our scatter plot. Now the share underscore us, I made that uh, in a prior video. Um, we talked about that before, so I'm not going to repeat that, but that's kind of how that works out. And so then we're going to go ahead and make our scatter plot here. That's what we're using our using this data set here called scatter plot. Excuse me. So once I highlight all of this, I press control enter. And now if you look off to the left, you're going to see these little check boxes right here. And so when I click on these, you can see now you only see married. When I click back, you can see now I only see widowed. Of course, I can have multiple that I pick widowed and separated, or I can remove them as I see fit. So again, this allows the user to interact with these various um, patterns in the data as they see appropriate. So let me go back and review what we talked about and we will wrap up this particular video. So in this video, we learned how to create plots that you can interact with either through a drop down box or a check box. Those are the two things that we looked at here. So our first example was a drop down box in which we are able to either select the term that we want to see in the visual or type it in as we see fit. The power of being able to, being able to type it in is that if you have a lot of groups, this is a great way to find what you're looking for much faster than trying to look through a bunch of different, you know, rows of, of data or rows of options that you might have. And then in the second example, we learned how to make um, check boxes which is the same purpose. And so you can see that example right here. Uh, we used the data set that we created in a prior video called share underscore data dot us. Again, this is something we made in prior videos. So it doesn't have to be explained a great deal here. Uh, let's see here. So we, this is the line of code right there for the shared us. I didn't show it over there. And so you can see right here, you, Type in share data uh, dollar sign new name of the data set and name of the key. Again, that's it right there in case you need to see that for yourself. And once we finish doing that, you can see the example off to your right right there. So I want to thank you again for uh, listening and watching this particular video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. Thank you for watching again and you take care.